Okay, what I want to show here is the latest version of this little project I've been working on called the Unity Flight Simulator. This is uh, phase two. And what I'm doing now is holding down different keys to show that uh, the particles vary based on what key you're using, if you're using regular thrust or double thrust. And if we bump into something, I've got some more buildings here, let's bump into one. We've got a crash sound that's attached to the uh, collisions. And there's sounds attached to the thrust as well. So you can hear those. I don't want to talk about how I did those things. And I think that's about it. Mostly those scripts and sounds. And um, yeah, I'll probably start here. Let me stop the game. And I've got all the scripts here uh, at 3dcognition.com on this page. Let me show you how I found it. If I go to my home page, um, if you go to Tutorials and um, Unity, it should be pretty high up on the list. It's called Unity Flight Simulator Phase 2. And uh, talks, you know, some links to the game and some other resources. And uh, there's collision.js. And that is how you do your collision sound. And I'll show you where that sound is tied in in a minute in Unity. And that's just a JavaScript. And then we have jetsound.js. This is for making sounds on your jets using the thrust input, which needs to be set up. And I'll show you how to do that. And uh, OK, yeah, when the thrust button is down, it plays the thrust sound. Otherwise, it turns it off, false. Then you have um, jet particles JavaScript. And this is just for making your particles come out when the thrust input button is held down. So the, the particles will play or stop based on that, um, that button. Again, we're going to have to talk about the input buttons. Then Flight Sim, this is pretty much the same as the one I showed previously. I just changed a few values, so we're using different keys to control it. Here's the controls I'm using now. And here's how to do your inputs. But I'll show you that. This is good, though, in case you get lost, you can check that out. Also, some of you don't have the ability to make your own models. So if I go to Downloads and Models, you'll see um, an in, um, Unity Flight Simulator Assets. And I've got the vehicle I'm using today as an FBX, the texture that goes with it in a template so you can make your own textures if you want to. Just save them as this name. And a little gate to fly through. Um, again, for those of you that don't have things like 3D Studio or Maya, although if you had the patience, you can get Blender for free and do it with Blender. Um, but back to Unity. Now, I added some models here really and just kind of duplicated them all around to give it a little more of an interesting scene. Um, and here's my vehicle, and then here's my particles. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the vehicle. There it is. And let's go to the particle system and just zoom in on that. And so you can see the vehicle and the particle systems. And uh, there's four of them now. One, two, three, and four. Let's talk about how those work. If I click on this first particle system and scroll over here to the inspector and come down, you'll see I've got a script called Jet Particles. Now, the Jet Particles script is right here. And then I've got one called Jet Particles 2. Anyway, I can drag this right over to the particle system. And I've already done that. Um, and when I click on that, any of those particles, you'll see the script is right there. And it's going to take whatever particle system you have drug it to as the one to um, animate. Now, how do you set up the inputs for that? Because we talked about, go back to this again, we talked about a thrust. So we're talking, talking about particles and there's thrust. So how do you get thrust to cause the particles to ignite? Well you do that in Unity Edit Project Settings Input. And then you go to the top and under Axis Size you add one value to whatever your value is. You may have a value of 15, make it 16. Go down to the bottom, that's where you'll see the new item here. And instead of it being uh, fire three or jump or whatever, 
call it thrust. And you do that by changing its name right here. So it says name. And then uh, for positive button, make it say S or whatever button you want to be for your thrust. And you'll probably want it to make sure it's going in the x-axis. I think that's all you need to worry about. Now I added another thrust called thrust 2 for the W button if I want to go twice as fast. And again I'm going in the x-axis. So that's all I did for inputs. Um, you'll see the same thing though when we go to the vehicle. For the vehicle you see, like in a previous tutorial I think I talked about, adding a rigid body, um, giving it a little bit of gravity and drag. 0.5 drag is pretty good. Um, adding a mesh collider to it, making sure the mesh collider is convex. Um, I've got an audio source in here called Jet Sound. Um, I've got a collision script here that's right here. And I just drug that right onto the vehicle. And if we look at that, collision, um, it needs a sound. So I'm going to click right here on this little button on the lower right and go grab a crash sound, any of these. Um, and I've already done that, but you can, you can pick whatever sound you want from the list. The same thing with the flight simulation script. Um, you know, just drag that right onto the object. And back to the vehicle again. Done the same thing with the jet sound script. The jet sound needs a sound, of course. The script needs a sound, so I'll click. And I'm using AUG uh, sounds for that. Let me see if I still have Audacity open. Yes. Here's Audacity. This is a free sound editing software. And uh, you know, you can go in and I just found some sound effects. I had some sound effects and I changed some values on, on them for whatever area I was selected. I just changed values until I liked it. And then I did a file export as Aug Vorbis. Or you could export it as a wave or an MP3 and that would work, but the wave file is really big and the MP3 file, it will create a little uh, moment of silence at the beginning. So when you're holding down that S or W button, you'll get some kind of uh, interruption in your loop sound. So the Vorbis doesn't do that, and it's a really small file, and I think it's what Unity recommends anyway. So go with Aug Vorbis and uh, close that. And we're back in the game, and what else can I tell you? Um, the buildings. Let's find one of those buildings. With these buildings, you know, you, it's hard to judge your scale right, and I wanted to be able to fly through these buildings, so um, I've gone up into the transforms and changed the scale. Let's say I want to make this one quite a bit taller, I'll make it quite a bit larger building. I'll say a scale factor of 10, and you can see it growing right there, and maybe really super tall, so I'll say 12 for its height, and then I can just move it. With my move tool, you have it, see I have selected here. Maybe I want to rotate it a little bit too. And that's all pretty basic stuff that you'll get used to pretty quickly in Unity. What else? Oh yeah, um, if you want to make the game and put it up on the web or you know just have it down to just two files instead of all this stuff, go to File, Build Settings, and I'm going to put this out to the web. And I'm going to click on Player Settings. And you can see here, I'm not going to worry about this stuff so much as the default screen width, 960 is what I'm saying, and then default screen height, say 600, and uh, and then how do you want it to appear? Anything else? That's good enough. So we want to, if we want to go ahead and make that, we'll just click on build and run. That'll make us a .unity file and a .dot um, .html file. The .html file will launch the .unity file. And I think that's it.